Boy. Let's see, make that. That's good. Power's on. Alright. Fix that. Hey, everybody, just a quick little video. I don't know how long beyond 15 minutes, maybe less. I don't know. Just wanted to chat with you. Touch base. Uh, did the, uh, what is it called? Podcast. <laughs> Podcast yesterday. So I've got to get that edited up for the team and out. So those of you uh, who have been listening to the podcast and are interested in it, sorry, cleaning up a little bit here too. It will be, uh, it'll definitely be sometime by the end of the week for sure. I'll get that edited up. I've been building the uh, the creature here uh, for the Mortarch. Mortarch? Hey, how are you? How are you doing? Yeah, I've been doing a lot of live stuff lately, so. But I've been building this up this weekend. Uh, I'll tell you what, this, if you're getting to start collecting sets, just starting out in the hobby, this may not be the best thing if you're not hobby oriented. Because <laughs> this requires a lot of painting before assembly and things like that. I magnetized the uh, seat, as you can see there, because I want to use all of the people. So what I'm going to do is, uh, have each person and then uh i'm not even gonna glue them to their seats because they, they they ride pretty well and then uh have them separate and then be able to swap out the saddles because i actually use different saddles for the different models and so that'll be cool and I'm, I'm, i've got some extra horse parts and i'm wondering if i can put these guys on those horse parts so i'm going to test that later later in the day but I get uh, put these armor plates on. I'm just waiting for these to dry enough so that they can get the washes on so I can bring them down the bone and all that stuff. But overall, this was a good kit. It was a little difficult in getting the right angles for all these pieces on the base that basically support this up here and then everything without everything colliding with each other. And it, it does collide a little bit by design. And getting those collisions right was a little bit difficult. It was definitely one of the more involved pieces I've built. Uh, and I know there's tougher kits, but uh, as far as those, I usually do pretty well with stuff like that. But this one, this one took a little bit more, because, especially because I had to paint it first. I usually just build, 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 solve all the building solutions and stuff like that, and then uh, move on to painting. But uh, this one I had to paint as I went. And then once you paint one thing as you go, at least for me, it, it felt like I had to paint each part as I went and get everything right, uh, leaving areas, you know, like the neck joint here not painted so that the glue would operate properly. But other than that, I think it came out pretty good. I've got, uh, I don't think I have any more parts of the beastie, and I'm not going to use the different armor plates that are here. Uh, because I could magnetize armor plates. It's not that big a deal. I looked at it, but it's just uh, It's extra pieces like the heads and stuff. I just chose the one head that I liked It's just extra pieces that I have to keep track of And if I do end up getting more start collecting sets to boost my army Which is something I am thinking about then I'll just build the other ones uh, As the other Mortarks Mortarch Mortarch. How do you do that? <laughs> Thank you, Jam Jar. Um, I'll just build them as what they are. You know I'm lying. I'll just magnetize those two so they all can be swapped up. But <laughs> I just uh, just use the other armor plates and other heads on those. That's what I'll do. Because, you know, no big deal. So, but that's not a big deal. But, yeah, this turned out pretty easy. Just to put a magnet in there, chopped off a little knob, put a magnet in here so that it could recess itself. It works out pretty good. Other than that, been just a hobby and doing the the stuff. Kind of a standstill because I'm not as enthused about the zombie part of the army as it was the skeleton. Uh, the painting scheme. Still trying to kind of figure it out. But I really just want to... I think the biggest thing is I'm like at a point now where I've got enough stuff ready to go. And I do want to, you know dig out of the, the gray sea and keep painting keep painting which I have been doing which I have been doing but I want to get this on the table I want to get I want to see this army on the table 
in all its glory. So that's the part that I'm getting really excited. Once I have this guy completed, then that's all the skeleton part, and I can bring a, I don't know, it's a death rattle, I think. But uh, it'll be, because the hex rays and stuff aren't technically part of that, um, it'll probably be a mixed uh, death army because of those things. And the necromancers, which I do want to bring those, because they to add some benefits. But uh, yeah, basically bringing death rattle army. Uh, it was a really good podcast yesterday and um talked about a bunch of stuff eighth edition good things bad things so you guys will be you guys that watch the podcast or listen to it can't watch what a podcast or this podcast it'd be very interesting uh i think it'll be an interesting podcast for you guys once i get it edited out and ready to go and for this one most of the edits are going to be quick for me i think i just have um some time like that just like that time gaps there what is next for me hobbying i i got a couple directions i'm gonna go jam jar one is me and lt are definitely getting started on his orcs definitely getting started on his orcs we're gonna do some orcs with you guys and get his painted i got him up here i've got a ton of his stuff already base coated as you can see ready to go and get painted i'm gonna help him paint them um but I'm, I'm going to tr truly try to just help him paint them. I'm going to hopefully be able to leave most of the work to him and with some direction. And there'll be something that he completes on his own, which is good. He's already chosen a color scheme for them and everything. And uh, he's actually started painting one a while ago, this guy right here. And uh, so we're going to get his work started. And for my projects, my stuff that I'm going to be doing... I've got uh, I've got to finish that little bit of admech and then I'm kind of stuck. I got my space marines to get out of right. I get those done, but I'm not really playing my space marines right now. And then I have that little bit of my Inquisition force to do, but my Inquisition force has been hammered and exploded, and it's a it's a demoralizing thing what's happened to that stuff on that front it, it really makes me go oh man i can't really play these like this and then it, it's broken up and it's it doesn't have a synergy like it used to have it doesn't have a, a complete cohesive idea and theme that i can build off of and so it, it really makes me go uh there's no new ad mech really to add i could add more priests and stuff not really sure about that because the expense of the priests um, they're good models. I want to add more robots for sure. So I may get some robots, but that would be adding to the Gray Sea. And I'm supposed to be trying to get out of the Gray Sea. So, yeah, I think it'll be painting Space Marines and LT's Orcs. Getting those up to par. Uh, doing some videos on the the rule sets. And, of course, my armies that I run. The, space, the, the Death Watch, the... Admech, the Inquisition, I'll do videos on those, the units and things that are good, good builds that I can see and uses. Although those things are going to change here. I believe as the Codex has come out, well, let me rephrase it. I'm hopeful that as the Codex has come out, the flavors will be put back in the army. Synergy between different um, forces will, will be more be restored in a little bit i know that we're not going to have uh, the the death star type of thing where you can just mix this that and the other randomly whatever in this giant thing but i would really like one i'd really like to be able to build a more cohesive inquisition force for sure so i hope i don't think inquisition codex is anywhere near on the uh, gw's priority list it's probably really far down there but I hope when, when and if it comes, <laughs> that it'll be something that will really be able to bring things together in a tighter formation. Admec, I'm hoping when Admec stuff comes up that we get some kind of transport or vehicle stuff. It's really weird um, that we don't have vehicles. We're the technology slash vehicle 
people of 40k <laughs> and we don't even have a segway scooter <laughs> it's crazy uh own chapter for eight what's it called what what uh or i guess three things what's it called uh what uh uh what are you a uh, successor from, and uh, what color scheme are you going for there, Jam Jar? Those would be uh, those three things, I guess, is what what you're doing. See how you're doing on that one. Uh, I, I did went with my own chapter for mine. I painted them Imperial Fist colors, but mine are actually Crimson Axes, which is an actual chapter listed. Uh, but the only information listed for it is that it is they were lost, and no one knows why. <laughs> So that's why I used them, because I was like, oh, I can make these guys anything I want. And the Crimson Axes are actually a Imperial Fist successor chapter as well. So that is the third thing that was listed for them. That they, they were lost, no one knows why, and that they are Imperial Fist successor chapter. So they were perfect for me. Because when I first started out, I didn't really have uh, what I needed to do in Imperial Fist chapter. And so I decided to do a successor chapter for now and uh, build them up right now i do i have a lysander i have bunches of stuff i could probably just go straight imperial fist with my stuff now but you know it, it, i like my chapter i like my little crimson axes and they do well i guess the reason i don't play them as much as i used to i guess i really need to re uh, reconnect with them in eight is that they kind of got you know stale in seventh is really what happened i think that happened for a lot of armies because there was like oh you play this formation this way with these units and that is how you win and you can't win unless you do it this way with this stuff and i i hate that and i didn't do that and i lost a lot of games with those guys because i just refused to follow the meta and for me that was just fine just fun. I lose a game, and uh, that's great. I don't care. Not follow the meta, that's fine. Because I don't like following the meta. And yes, I put this on very heavy on these skeleton type units because when it dries, it creates this dark, earthy effect on them. And really does give the bones this, um, or what's supposed to be bones, right? this um, unearthed from the ground look and feel to them so that is exactly what I'm going for so that's why I kind of get a heavy coat on them it really transforms washes are great things I remember when I was young and we had the lead miniatures and we were using just regular paints and we would paint something and oh man it, it was it was messed up you know, looking at it now, you're like, wow, that's that's an ugly thing you made there. <laughs> but, oops. But, um, yeah, it was, it was just really basic. It was basically like a lot of times they're like using like the testers models paints and stuff like that. That's all we had access to. And I remember there was one paint. I don't know who made it. It might have been Citadel, but it could have been Ralph Partha or something. But it was like a cream paint that you had to paint with and then uh, at the end of everything you had to, to treat it with this sealer thing so that it would seal in and i had gotten some of those and i thought they were just cool one because they were this cool new thing and two because they they were a little bit easier to work with than those testers paints you know and they they made things look more realistic you know testers is is and was basically for vehicles and you know, like making hot rods and stuff so a lot of their stuff is glossy and uh, they had a few of the military type paints that weren't that way but you know it just it didn't make it the like it wasn't really designed for painting people and stuff like that at least the limited amount of paints we had access to uh, of course there was stuff that we didn't have much access to. Um, I'm going to try this right here and see how that goes out. Just missed a little bit of bone color on there, but if I cover it with this, it'll probably be okay. I always just go back and touch it up. But, of course, now, 
see, I say these things, and then I don't mention that where I had access to paint was um, the military commissary, or PX, because my dad was in the military, or stepdad was in the military, we lived overseas in Germany at the time, before the Berlin Wall fell down, or was ripped violently down by protesters. Um, and so we were very limited in what we had, but they did have, you know, the D and D books at the bookstore there, and uh, um, some of the the game stuff, and that's how we got access to it, and the the paints and stuff, and most of that was the testers, and not a lot of the specialty stuff that we had access to, which was um, any think type of uh, GW stuff, but. Um, my stepdad decided that, you know, me doing this hobby stuff was at least keeping me out of trouble, so he would, and you know, from time to time, get something. Most of the stuff I bought, though, was, um, they probably still do it then, but back then, and they had a summer jobs program that during the summer, since there wasn't a whole lot for us kids to do, and they just really didn't want us getting in trouble causing international incidents and such not. Uh, they had a summer jobs program, and you know, you go work at the commissary, the exchange, the golf course, wherever, whatever. And I did that. So most of the stuff I got, um, I bought with money from the summer jobs program, because most of the time, uh, most years, my summer jobs program would turn into an after-school work program because I did pretty well at the jobs that I did, and they would always, you know, hey, you know, it'd be really nice if. Uh, you could uh, work during the, the school year after after school with us and still stay here. And so I would do that at least about half the school year. And then my, my mom would get get upset about something or other and then decide that, you know, I couldn't do work and school at the same time and make me quit. But uh, I'll open up old wounds. Let's leave that there, right? See the Griffin Claws base purple Stegen scale green half and half. Oh yeah, I gotta check out. You, did, I gotta check that out then. I, have, I haven't been able to watch too many videos lately. Uh, crazy stuff going around here. Um, the lawnmower blew up, and so then the backyard grass got too high, and then I had to mow it down with a weed eater. <laughs> oh. The suffering and the pain. <laughs> but it's done now. It's done now. Oh, that was a... Yeah. Finally had to uh, get someone to help, though. And get it down. And now it's down and tamed. And uh, work it out. Oh, no! Almost an on-camera um, spill of the, the, the shade there. <laughs> I see so many of Facebooks where people have spilled these things over. You see, I put this in it like this. It's one to hold the lid open more and two so that it, certain ways, if it tries to tilt certain ways, it'll keep it from going over all the way. But sometimes that may not be the thing, right? <laughs> it may just go right all over on the, uh, the shades. And then they put them, and then they went and got somewhere. I don't want it. Hold on. Let me clean that off. They went and put them in um, these giant jars that are like, more, you know, I don't know if they were advertising you'd be like, 100% more spill likely. <laughs> it's just like, why? Why do you do this to us? You know these things tipping all over the place on us all the time. And then you're going to go put it in this giant, tall, thin-bottomed jar that's going to tip over some more on us. Just so you can sell us some more watered down paint, which is all shade is, right? They're making the bucks with it. But it's good, it's awesome stuff. It really it really is cheating in a way. The shade. It's really just cheating in a way. Cause it really does make things just really super easy. Um, what time is it here? Let me see. Can check real quick. I don't even know it's was six something. Six twenty? p.m. in the p.m. is 6.20. I believe if you're in England, we are uh, approximately six hours um, time difference, depending on where you are. 
in the there. But overall, you're being say five to seven hour time difference, I believe. Not sure how the time zones break down over there. I do remember that it's uh, not very far from one place to the next as it is over here in the States. And so uh, time is different. I need this. That's what I was looking for. The Gilliman Blue. I'll tell you, show you something. Though. I don't know if you can see it because I shook it up. It's hard to see. Okay, I'll just maybe I can point it out. Uh, I'm going to right angle. Okay, this is like the top of where the shade normally is when you get it. This right here is where my shade is now. And, and I got this brand new shade bottle when I started this skeleton army. So Daddy. I've used half of one of these. I've used, what, is, what is in here? What, buddy? Here, here's my phone. Well, he only gave me my phone back? Did it die? Is that why I'm getting my phone back? No, as long as every battery. It has 1% battery. Okay. <laughs> well, it's not technically dead. Let me charge it then. Gonna paint from salamanders for you. Yeah, I'm gonna paint them salamanders. <laughs> he's, uh, he's referring to something I posted on Facebook. Uh, someone in one of the other, not the in, not the fanatics group, but someone had posted something about salamanders army, and they were like, "Hey, what do you think about my color scheme?" And so I went and got a picture of an actual salamander, it was black and yellow, and stuck a Space Marine helmet <laughs> on it, and uh, just paint paint.net like. A, and just a, it was a cheesy little not even <laughs> thing it was really not very good looking but I posted in there and then I posted in Fanatics too I said hey make a new salamander because <laughs> it was kind of it was kind of funny but yeah it was very cheesy though all right uh, I painted these claw tips with the uh, pallid witch flesh and I've been doing that on all the claws and then I've been going over like with this Gilliman blue like several layers as you can see, I've done the um, the light blue there, and I'll go over with the Gilliman blue. It just is a different effect between the two, and I really like the the other effect of like several layers of this on um, these. Because you can see the first couple layers, I'd say the first three layers, it's just kind of like okay, it's got blue in areas, and then um, it's real pale. But then after that, it starts to really brighten up, and it, it almost gives it a, um, uh, what's the word, like a, um, like a gemstone quality to it. It's like the gemstone paints, but more work. <laughs> because I don't have the gemstone paints, and we have to do some of this stuff sometimes. We have to, I know me, I'm not, I don't have a giant thing of paint. I'm, I, I try to buy new paints when I can and, and build up my paints and I guess that's just really how you have to do it but uh, a lot of us I'm assuming are like me and you just you you want to do something and you look at your paints and you go well this is the paints I got to work for oh take care jam jar take care but these are the paints that I got to work with right and this is what I got to work with so I do the best I can with what I got and that's how I do it really I just grab the stuff and say okay well this this is what I got. I'm try to get some in there in the eye. That's what I'm trying to do. And uh, let's see what I can do with these paints here. And then if there's some that I really don't have, then you know, go to the store and get some. If I can, if I can't, well then just deal with what I got. For the most part, though, I find that at least in my paint collection, the ones I've been getting lately are the browns because for some reason when I first started out I just was like I got like one brown it was the dark brown I can't remember what the name of it is but the the um, Citadel the one of the darker browns and I was like that's good and so I don't you know whatever I'm not gonna paint a lot of brown I'll just use this for leather and stuff that I need and I really have found that I need the browns and the tans and all these because I use them a whole lot for different textures and flesh tones and things. And I guess maybe part of that too comes from when I first started out, I was, uh, I didn't like to paint heads and flesh tones because I was very bad at it. And I just wasn't thinking 
I'm going to test this on here and see how this does. I'm going to do that. I think that is going to give me an effect that I want, so I'm going to keep going with it. But uh, I just wasn't, I was afraid of it. I think a lot of people are afraid of the faces, you know, painting faces and stuff like that. But then I realized, as, as you have to realize over time, that you are never going to get better at something that you don't do, right? So if I was never painting fleshes, if I was never painting um, flesh tones or leather capes or all that stuff that you see and you're like, wow, that's really awesome, I wish you could do that. Well, if I'm never painting it, then I'm never going to get good at it and I'm never going to be able to say I can do that too, so... That means that I got to do them, and that's why I've been building that up and actually attempting a lot of that stuff, putting more bare heads on models, uh, attempting models that have flesh tones to them. There we go. That is, that's going to be cool when that's done. Wow, the difference between those two. Shades are cheating. They are cheating, cheating, cheating. Oh, wow. I'm about to talk for 26... <laughs> All right, well, apparently I've been talking for 26 minutes here. I will uh, get some videos up about um, the different armies I'm playing in 8th edition because I definitely have uh, finally been with them, played them, the ones that I've played enough that I'll start the videos on and gone through the codexes and indexes and rules and looked at things and kind of come to my carefully considered opinion. I mean... I'm like everybody else. When I first started, and when first things came, when first there were rumors, I had an opinion. And when first uh, solid stuff started coming out, I had an opinion. And when I first got it in my own hands, I had an opinion. And all of those opinions were slightly different for different reasons. But now I finally had time to totally consider it and understand my position, and uh, I think come to a more informed opinion. I think a very informed opinion. All right, been about 30 minutes, and next I come back, I will have a different type of video for you. Next live, I will see this guy put together all the way, all his arms and body, everything done, and have him hanging out with us. This is uh, it's Archon the Black, I think. I think that's that guy. All right, guys, we will uh, see you later, talk to you later, and uh, you guys have a good night time. And, oh, yeah, uh, check out the Fanatics Enterprise uh, YouTube channel. You can uh, just search Fanatic, uh, I think it's Fanatic, Fanatics, F-A-N-A-T-I-X, space E-P. Or look into my subscribe channels. It's in my subscribe channels, and then click from there. Alrighty, we will talk to you later.